Fast Show is brought to you by the Ostrom Group. The best cars in the world. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Rob Ash Show. I'm Mick Trill, along with Drake football coach Rob Ash. And, Coach, congratulations. Great way to finish up the season, 29-27, a victory over Evansville. Nice job. Thank you, Mick. It was a really exciting, wonderful season for everybody involved in the program. An 8-2 and two final record, which is what our guys were really shooting for, and, a, and you couldn't ask for a more exciting game to finish it up. I know during the year we never exactly asked you exactly what record you think you'll finish with, but certainly an 8-2, and two, just a great record with the... Uh, the teams that you've had to play, some really tough uh, teams uh, week after week. That's right, and I, I think 8-2 and two is a great record for this team. Uh, we had set our goal at the beginning of the year to try to be undefeated against our Division Three teams and try to finish first in the Pioneer League, and we knew being undefeated was virtually impossible with the schedule we had to play, but 8-2, and 9-1 and one was kind of the upper level of what we were shooting for, and we, I'm pretty satisfied with that. It was a good accomplishment for this team. It's had a little bit of a slow start, but uh, you finally got rolling and picked up a win, and uh, especially for the seniors. Well, the seniors really wanted this game, and they, they played extremely hard. I think we played a little tight early in the game because they were so emotional, but as the game went on, I think the determination to win the game just began to surface more and more, and in the end, we were really tough. And I know one of the things that you saw was, that, or thought was, that if it came down to a close game, your kicking game would win. And we're going to see in the highlights here in a minute, that's exactly what happened. I think as you build a program, you know, you have, it seems like coaches always start with offense and defense, and kicking seems to come a little bit later. It did for us. We haven't had as good a kicking game at any point in the five years I've been at Drake as we have this year. And, and Bill Willers, you know, proved it again that, you know, he's a clutch kicker two weeks in a row. And that was the difference in the two teams. Our field goal kicking, uh, you know, pulled it out for us. Got some exciting highlights to show you. They're going to be upcoming, especially that uh, last one minute of this football oh, yeah. game, which was very exciting for the fans. We'll have that right after this. For nearly 40 years, Dave Ostrom has offered Central Iowans cars that set the highest standard for excellence, superior automotive technology, style, and, of course, value, plus a commitment to service designed to satisfy your needs. Today, our three dealerships offer an outstanding selection of import and domestic cars. The Ostrom Group. Together, we bring you more of the best cars in the world. Hi, this is Tom Baldwin, owner of Home Team Pizza. That's the only place you can get Des Moines Super Large or Large, that fantastic 16-inch pizza. You already know we make our dough every day from scratch, and so it's the freshest anywhere. And you already know we guarantee delivery in 30 minutes or you get your pizza free. But believe it or not, there's still some people that don't know that our larger large pizza with single topping is only $7.99. And it's absolutely delicious. So call Home Team Pizza right now for your larger large. Service. Answers. Saving. Our company is smaller now, but the level of service from Holmes Murphy is still the same. When I have insurance questions, Holmes Murphy has the answers. They found ways to reduce our premiums by cutting our risks. Integrity. Service. Advice. Leaders turn to Holmes Murphy. Welcome back to the Raw Bay Show. Coach, another great effort by the ball club. Another game, another tough one. Good effort. Well, our defensive team played extremely well, Mick. They stopped Evansville's passing game for basically three quarters, particularly well in the first half. And the problem was they had to play too much of the game. Our offense didn't have one of their best days of the year, and, and uh, our defense had to play too much football. But in the beginning stages and when our offense was struggling, they were superb. And, and really, overall in the game, I think that was the key to the win. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights of this game. I tried to talk Coach in to start with the last minute, but he didn't want to do it. He'll start at the start of the we'll game. We'll try to give you what happened here. First of all, I want to remind everybody it was the last game, of course, for our seniors. The team gave a tribute to the seniors as they were introduced one by one coming down the, you know, between their teammates. That's always a very emotional time, as I said before, and a lot of tears and eyes, and you know, because these guys uh, really work hard to play. And what we have here is the first goal line stand. This is off our game shot because the other camera was malfunctioning. There's two real good stops here by the defense on first and second down. A nice sack there. Just typical of the, of the play in the first quarter. Evansville was driving the ball but not scoring. You can see the big tight end uh, Hogue in motion here and the quarterback trying to throw the ball on one of their little slant routes. Our defense did a great job there in that goal line stand. And then a little bit later, watch on the right side of your screen. Uh, Tom Becker, number eight, is going to come in and block this punt right there. 
The ball rolls free. Again, I apologize for the shot, but it's the best we could do. And the ball squirted loose out of that pile. And B.J. Hellyer, who's a freshman, uh, recovered it for a touchdown. And this is the reason why we wanted to be sure we had this for everybody to look at. Uh, there was no other shot of this play available, so we wanted to show you the blocked punt. It, it was an amazing thing. We were ahead 6 to nothing, and we didn't even have a first down yet on offense. It was almost the end of the first quarter. Now we go into second quarter action. We get back to our, uh, our shot from the TV camera shot by Rick Steenbach, and you'll see Mike Stanfield running there for a, for a first down. That was our first first down of the ball game. Finally, you know, trying to get a little things going, but we returned the favor here on the punt problem. Uh, pretty decent snap. Matt, Matt Sneller couldn't handle it, and uh, Evansville got a big break here early, but again, defense rises to the occasion. Here the uh, rollout, and uh, nice defensive play there by Darren Book on Hans Hoag, and uh, there was an offensive pass interference call on another player on Evansville, which may, uh, repeated the down. Here's Fish again. What a fine quarterback he is. He threw this one down in the end zone and, and uh, it was a little overthrown. That was uh, uh, second quarter. Darren Book with the interception. Great play, great stop for our defensive team. Uh, Fish would throw 50 more passes be before he threw another interception in this game. Um, going on here, watch Craig Ortworth. We got some defensive highlights here in the second quarter. We didn't do much offensively. Craig Ortworth with a sack there. His quickness was just dominating. Here we go again. Great coverage. And uh, Charlie Partridge, number 60. Uh, getting in there along with uh, Art Rainier, number 49, another sack on Fish. We hit him pretty hard, but to his credit, he kept coming back. But defense was doing a great job. Here's another time by Ortworth. Great pressure, sack, causing a fumble, recovered by Drake. Time after time after time, our defensive pressure did a great job. And finally, at the end of the second quarter, we began to break free offensively. We had had a couple turnovers, but Mike Stanfield got loose there on one of his zone dive runs. Now watch the fake by Roy. Everybody went with him. Roy's been able to tuck the ball away here. All kinds of room to run down the sideline. Dave Doran, George Harlan Bacchus out there blocking. Uh, Roy didn't exactly knock those guys down, did he? <laughs> no. We got down there into the one yard line, and I guess it's no surprise who we're going to go to here. Uh, Stanfell? Good guess, Mick. Right in there for the touchdown. So, you know, if you're Evansville, you've got to be discouraged because you've played a good first half up and down the field, um, but you're down 12 to nothing. A blocked punt. One drive by the offense, literally only one drive all half, and we're a 12-0 lead. Great job by the defensive line on sacks and good coverage against Evansville's passing game. Here's some of the folks that make our show possible. Well, as we go into the second half, Bulldogs up 12 0, coach. Evansville came out firing, Mick. They had the, the ball first in the second half. We were hoping we could stop the first drive, but of course, what they wanted was to get back and get on the board, and they came out pretty fired up. Hans Hoag, number 84, great tight end, had a big game, 11 catches on the game, and they threw the ball pretty well in his first time down the drive. They're down the field. Another nice uh, completion there. That was on third and long, and they converted a lot of third and long situations. Finally here, they try to run the football. That's one, one area we did really well all day. We stopped their running game exceptionally well. Uh, so they had to go back to the passing game. And we had stopped their passing game down deep. But watch him thread the needle here to Hogue. Good coverage there, Book and DeMoss. Uh, but uh, Hogue makes the catch, and, and uh, Fish put it right on the money. So Evansville is on the board now, 12-7 uh, to 7 on their first drive of the second half. So we knew we were in for a ball game after they came back out. Uh, they kicked the ball down. They tried to kick a squib kick, but it went right to Chad Briley, and that was a bad move for them. <laughs> watch Chad get through here. Sean Diggs out in front, and all the guys on that kickoff return team. Now watch the push right there. You know, Chad was out of bounds for about 10 yards, so he returned it to the 50, and we got another 15 yards on the, on the uh, uh, late hit. Another little, nice little rollout pass there from Fletcher to Briley, moving the ball down. Then we drop back. Look how much time Roy has here. Offensive line, great protection, and he finds Sean Diggs on a pattern that we've used really well here the last three weeks of the season. And Diggsy got the touchdown. Big, big play for our offense to come back 
answering um, Evansville's touchdown and uh, going from uh, you know getting back up to a 12-point lead again. So it was 19 to 19 to seven, and I felt like that was a really important key for us to, to stall Evansville's comeback. They still come out firing, continuing though. But look at Ortworth there getting in. Nice catch here by Hogue. This is a big man who has soft hands, and he just did a great job. I thought he was going to drop that football, but he did an excellent job. But they still can't stop Craig. His quickness is just too much for a lot of these people who try to block him man on man. And, and finally, they doubled him in much of the fourth quarter. So we got the ball back again. Nice play action pass here on the first down. Look at Fletcher. He zipped that ball into Digsy. That gets our drive started. Then we pretty much uh, carried it on the ground here for a while. Julian Nathaniel, good blocking out front. He gets a good gain to the, in, in the weak side there. Uh, Julian had running real well. His turf was a little bit uh, mushy. He got good footing, and the, no kind of turf seems to bother Stanfield. He always <laughs> runs well. He did a great job up there. We kind of pounded the running game into the boundary, and then we got down deep, and we had a little uh, quick out pattern there to Briley. We got him in a man-to-man -man situation. It was really tough for anybody to stay with Chad. We got the ball off quick and got the touchdown. Uh, Chad made a good play there on it. So we go ahead 26-7 to at this point, and for the first time in the game, I'm thinking, okay, everything's working now. We, we're stopping them. We've got uh, offense going now. We're in great shape. And uh, unfortunately, Evansville came right back. A nice play there on a third down situation. Uh, Hogue got just enough to get the first down. Then we turn into the fourth quarter. We still got 26-7 lead. Big pressure here. The defense, I'm thinking, OK, let's get him stopped. John Elkin, Joe Bianchi there, number 34 in, getting the sack. A blitz situation worked for, for us in that case. But then uh, Fish lofts this ball down. Look, a really good catch. Brad Nemec has great coverage. But the guy makes a, a super catch in the back of the, in the end zone there for the touchdown, and Evansville answered our touchdown. So 26 to 13. Instead of that big lead, you know, they cut it back down to 13 points. We tried to get out but had to punt, so Evansville got the ball right back. Big play here over the middle. Again, that was a third down uh, play there where they threw the ball down over the middle and did a nice job getting a, a completion. Now watch a man in motion, number 22. He's going to come out and they get us in a man-to-man -man situation. That's not unlike our play we threw to Briley. Man-to-man, -man, receiver on a quick out pattern, and uh, that's Albano. He got the, the touchdown. So Evansville's back in. They're going for two here, and they've got a, a great play here. We've got good coverage, but Fish is patient, finds his receiver in the back of the end zone. Excellent coverage by Tommy Becker and an excellent catch. Now, this is a game here where two teams in the fourth quarter are really you know, pounding at each other, making one great play after another, and they close the gap to 26-21. We came back here after the, uh, the touchdown. We've got to make something happen offensively. We ran the reverse with Briley. Uh, super job. I mean, I'm going to miss number 81 making plays like this. It got, <laughs> got us out of the hole, got us in pretty good shape here. We thought, OK, now we're going to move. But on third down and four, uh, Evansville got penetration, and, and they stopped Mike Stanfield. And I guess you got to hand it to him. I mean, we've lived on Mike Stanfield on third down situations all year. And, they stopped Mike Stanfield in a third down situation, so they deserved to get the ball back, and they did. But they had it a long ways from home, and you know we're still uh, still in pretty good shape. But look at this catch! Again, excellent coverage by Mike Beeman, and their receiver just made a great catch. I mean, we're not really making mistakes here defensively. You just got a team that's that's playing extremely well on the part of Evansville now with their pass game. There's good pressure again. We got a man in the face of uh, the quarterback, but Hogue slipped around and got behind his defensive man and. Uh, He's cramping up. He's so tired, but he's making the plays. Defensively, we, we made good penetration there, but Albano bounced off the tackle and got in for the go-ahead touchdown. And boy, was that a sag for our team to go down. They go for two, and this is a key play right here because if they make the catch there, they have a three-point lead. But as it was, they missed the catch on the two-point play, so it was 27-26. There was about four and a half minutes, five minutes left in the game at this point, and I'm thinking, okay, let's get a good return. We'll be okay, but look what happened. Oh, no. The ball bounced around there. I mean, no fault of anybody's. They tried. They squibbed it to keep it away from Chad, and I'm sure they didn't anticipate an onside kick or anything like it. Look at their reaction. I mean, this is a big, big play for them, and, and now they got the ball right back with a one-point lead. Clock's running down. They tried to run. Great stick here by John Elkin. He didn't go too fast from his backside linebacker position, so we stopped him. Second down was an incomplete pass, so it's third down now and 10. Uh, the quarterback dropped the snap from center, picks it up. He's got a man open downfield who you can't see on this uh, tape, but luckily we got in there and sacked him. So the defense on three plays stopped Evansville, and they've done that in crucial situations all year. We tried to block the punt, didn't get it, but Chad makes a nice catch and gets 16 yards on the return. I thought they were going to break him in two there on, 
on the tackle. Hard hit. We're a long ways away from home here. We got about three and a half minutes left in the game. But here's the same play we threw to Chad for the touchdown earlier. And once again, Chad Briley breaks a tackle, makes another guy miss, and Jerry Mead, the All-American linebacker, finally makes the tackle. We're up at midfield. Three plays and a penalty, and we end up with fourth and five. Fourth and five situation. We finally decided to call a play. I want you to watch the top of the screen. Sean Diggs is going to run across, and as he runs across, watch Mike Stanfield slip out of the backfield behind him. Everybody went with Diggsy, and Mike was open on fourth and five there. We got him the ball for the, uh, for the first down. Crucial play in the game, well executed by the offensive team. Then we ran the ball with Cortez Hull, and I think with time running down, they thought we would pass. That was a big play for us, and here on third, and third down, we had lost some yardage on a penalty. Roy scrambles and finds Rich Hoskins. Excellent catch right in the middle of the field. He fell on the ground, and the ground can't cause a fumble, so we got ourselves in fourth and three. Minute and 15 seconds left or something like that, and Billy Willers comes in for the field goal, and he drilled it. There was never any question about it. So we got the, uh, got the field goal to go ahead 29-27. Evansville was offsides or... I thought maybe there wasn't, there might have been a penalty there, but we left the points on the board, of course, and took the, uh, took the lead, 29-27. Now the only thing I was sad about was that there was so much time left, a minute and a half. <laughs> it felt like a lot of time was left, and it turned out to have a thrilling finish. Again, Evansville just kept, uh, kept going. Here were two teams in this game, Nick, that really wanted to win this game. And, you know, we tried everything we could to stop them. Third and ten here, they hit the, the pass down the middle. They got the ball on the 11-yard line, second down after they killed the clock. And they try a route they've tried a few times before in the game, and we were in a zone defense. I think they were expecting man-to-man, -man, and Todd DeMoss, number 40, makes the interception. Fantastic play. Great way to end the game. And I'll tell you, nobody was more relieved than the Drake crowd and Drake coaches when that happened. Great, great finish. Exciting ball game. What a great effort by the Bulldogs, and a good effort by Evansville, as you mentioned. I'll tell you, this was, it was not over until the final buzzer. Well, it was a, it was a great college football game. And, and I think Evansville and Drake have developed a kind of rivalry now that's going to spur each team to greater heights playing against each other. Both teams want to win this game very much. We've been very fortunate. We've won a couple close ones the last couple of years. They have a good program, but our guys really play hard against them and they, it kind of inspires us to play them and I think it's going to be a great rivalry. Let's take a look at the stats of the uh, football game here. Well, you'll see some great passing stats for Evansville as you look down the line there. The 463 yards passing, 30 out of 55 for Fish. He's a great quarterback. He's only a sophomore, unfortunately, and the big tight end's only a junior. But look at the rushing yards. They were minus 11 for rushing. A lot of that because of the sacks. But, you know, over on the other side of the coin, we still have balanced offense. We have 200 yards rushing, 126 passing, which is less than we'd like. But overall, very st steady game for us. We didn't play very well in the first part of the game on offense. That's why those numbers are a little bit low. Uh, if we want to try to continue to beat teams like Evansville, we've got to play a better ball control offense. But the defense did a great job until they got tired in the fourth quarter. And really, the statistics are a little misleading because of that. Yeah, you know, I was say that 463 a little misleading because I thought a lot of time our defensive back was right there. Oh, and they made great plays to get those yards. We'll be back with more of the Raw Bay Show right after this. His wife Annette, daughters Elise and Marlene, and grandchildren Michael, Risa, and Mikey invite you to join them and all the employees at Home Plastics in supporting the Drake Bulldogs all season long. This fall, there's exciting nonstop action and entertainment when the Bulldogs hit the field. Take your family to all the games. Sam does. There are two names Des Moines can count on Home Plastics and Drake University. To make a great Sunday brunch, start with a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff, like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once, and you'll be back for more.
And welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Time now for our Ostrom Group Play of the Game. Here's Coach Rob Ash. This week's play of the week was the interception by Todd DeMoss at the end of the ball game that iced the game for us. Watch the two receivers for Evansville at the top of the screen. They're going to come across on the crossing routes, and the tight end goes the other direction. We had good rush here by Steve Flattery, number 94. Eric Fish throws the ball, but our defensive call was a zone with seven men in the end zone, looking for the pass into the end zone. And Todd DeMoss comes right in and makes the play, makes the interception, and the defensive guys go crazy. Only 15 seconds were left in the game, 29-27 lead, and obviously a very... Excited moment, very happy moment for all the defensive guys. Great defensive call, great execution there by Todd DeMoss, staying at home in his defensive coverage, a play that won the football game for us. Time now for our home team pizza player interviews. We had a lot of guys that played their heart out on Saturday. Todd Kim talks with the seniors. Well, as we wrap up the 93 season, it's only fitting that we honor the entire senior class here at Drake as our players of the week, especially after an exciting game like that. And we'll start with tight end Dave Dorn. Dave, uh, what's it mean to see uh, this season come to an end? I'm sure a lot of mixed emotions with all these guys. It's just that uh, we've all been playing since we were so young, and it's taken up so much of our lives, and now we don't. it's over. And it's like a big chunk of our lives is just gone. And that's something we have to deal with, but uh, we went out and played hard today like we have all season, and that was a good way to end it. Defense played a great game, uh, first uh, half, and second half, uh, the offense came out uh, really hard, uh, helped us out when defense was slagging. Um, it was, but I'm sad it's over. It's the saddest one, win I've ever had. This is just a great win for the whole program. Drake University's football program, program is just a class act, and it just showed on the field today. We've had so many goals this season. Uh, we've got a large portion of our goals. It's just a tremendous feeling. It's so fulfilling to know that you know we can set our goals and then as a unit just come out here and everybody does their job and we get them done. Well, I'll tell you what, there's, there's not a better feeling in the world. I mean, I, I got hit harder, I think, on that play by my own teammates than I got hit all year, so <laughs> it was a great feeling. Describe the play for me. It looked like uh, they were, they were going to go for the touchdown there. It looked like they threw it into coverage. Yeah, well, I think they had trips uh, away from me. I didn't really have anybody to cover over on my side. Uh, just reading the quarterback's eyes, and he was looking right down the middle, kind of floated over there, and he threw it right to me, so I can't hardly ask for anything better than that in the season. Well, it's great to be a part of such an awesome program for four years, and I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to be a part of all these guys. It's a great senior class, and uh, I'm really happy that I could uh, be a part of the whole thing and stick with it for four years because it takes a long, you know, to do it for a big part of your life, you know, and I'm just glad I could be there and be a part of it. Thank you. Uh, just an unbelievable way to end a four years here at Drake and just have a great time, and I want to thank all the seniors and the coaches and you know, it couldn't be better. Just a great way to win and a great way to finish. So thanks, everybody. Yeah, he twisted my ankle up a little bit, and I wasn't full speed for the rest of the game, so coach sort of made me sit out. <laughs> I bet that was tough. Yeah, it? it was really tough for being a, it's my last game, and I won't be playing again. It's tough to watch all, all my other guys, all my other seniors and Bulldogs out there fighting. It was tough. Right. Todd intercepted that. I was like, this is what Drake football is all about. You know, everyone coming together. You know, we're struggling a little bit at the end. Todd jumps in there, intercepts that ball. The offense holds on to it. We get the win, you know. It's what it's all about, us leaning on each other, depending on each other, and you know, getting the win. It's, I don't know. It's just beautiful. I just love it, everything. It's just great. Okay. And then began the senior year as we did. We were, we were just, it was, it was just like a clan. And, and, and I can't describe the feeling, but it, it, it felt so good out there watching them, you know, when they were moving both defense and offense. I mean, it was just both units working together. Seniors taking charge and, and leading, and, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, uh, this has been a big part of my life, you know. It's the main reason I came here to Drake. It's been great. This team showed the tremendous character it's had all year, you know. We depended on the defense first two quarters, and then they depended on us. Put the ball in the end zone th third and fourth, and then came down to it. Todd made a great play. Yeah, second half, we really got driving, opened up some holes, and we just wanted it more, I think, and we just kept driving them off the ball and getting some good runs. Yeah, it went pretty good. I was just happy to be involved with it and get in the action and, uh, with the last game and just come away with a W. I was just real excited and I was glad I was able to be a part of it and uh, contribute to the W's today. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Uh, once again, credit the line. They've done a great job all year round, so uh, they get most of the credit there. And I was lucky to get the holes and basically get the yardage today, so they get a lot of the credit. Well, the guys up front just did their job today, and sometimes the hole wasn't real big, but it was there, and you just got to run through it. And they got all everybody got their blocks today when we got to, when we got some good yardage. Sum up this season for the senior class. I know it had to be special. 
Oh yeah, it's real, real emotional to end this way. I mean, this really describes our senior class the way we ended this. Do we never give up? And there's no, we're not afraid of anybody, and we can always come back and win. Well, that's the Drake senior class. Obviously, a class that's going to be missed here, but good enough to be named our players of the week. For nearly 40 years, Dave Ostrom has offered Central Iowans cars that set the highest standard for excellence, superior automotive technology, style, and of course, value. Plus, a commitment to service designed to satisfy your needs. Today, our three dealerships offer an outstanding selection of import and domestic cars. The Ostrom Group. Together, we bring you more of the best cars in the world. The delivery time of gasoline, diesel fuel, and motor oil supplies is crucial to Iowa industry. Timely personal service and quality Conoco products at an affordable price that service professionals and their customers can depend on. Parker Oil Company of Des Moines, Iowa. And welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Coach, let's take a look at the Pioneer League standings. These are the final standings, Mick. Of course, Dayton's the winner. They did lose their last game of the year, but they finished 9-1. And, and look at Drake there, second place. What a great finish for the Bulldogs. 8-2 and two overall, second best record in the entire conference. And, you know, the rest of our teams had good years. San Diego beat a good Wagner team out there, so they only lost to Drake at home this year. And a lot of fine moments for the league, a lot of close games. I think it's going to be real exciting in years to come. The Bulldogs, 8-2 and two in a very rugged schedule week after week. You got the team up, and they kept coming back time after time. What a great season. Thank you, Mick. It was a fun team to coach. They really did a great job under pressure. I don't think I've ever had a team that was tougher in close games than this team. You know, we won three close games, scoring in the last minute of three different times to win, and in each of those games, we intercepted a pass after that last score to clinch the victory. So it was a team effort all year long. We'd already heard from the seniors, of course, and they, were, uh, they really came through and led, uh, led this team through. The seniors developed into a great class for us. Uh, they sort of stayed back in the shadows last year behind another good senior class, and we wondered about them a little bit, where the leadership would be. And their leadership isn't speech making, but their leadership is playing the game on the field all year long. They did a great job that way, and I'm, it's going to be a class I'm going to remember. Playing in the Pioneer League, certainly, and the rest of the non conference schedule, very, very tough. Coaching staff did a great job getting them prepared week after week and get them motivated. Right, we have a great coaching staff here, Mick, and they did a nice job. We put in long hours, but we have to because of the schedule we play. Jay Neiman and Joe Hadachek, the two coordinators, and all the other coaches, I thought just did an excellent job this year. And we'd be remiss, of course, we didn't thank our fine sponsors that have helped bring this show to people. Well, I'd particularly like to thank Dave Ostrom and Kim Meadows at the Ostrom Group because they are the primary sponsor for the show, and uh, there's, without their support, it would be tough to do what we do. And I also want to thank Rick Steenbach. Rick's behind the scenes all the time. He shoots all the footage, goes to all the games. He, you know, he bumps us in and out all these breaks and keeps us under control. And Rick, I thought, did a great job on the show. And congratulations on a great season, Coach. We'll look forward to next year. Thank you, Mick, and I enjoyed working with you this year, too. It was fun having another season with you. Hope you've enjoyed this year of the Rob A. Show. Hope to see you next year. Thanks for watching.